All right, so today we're going to jump into the string quartet. The reference score you're looking at is pretty wide, but when we're in finale, because we're going to be working in um, a portrait mode rather than a horizontal, uh, uh, we're going to be working in portrait rather than landscape, your score is going to be narrower. So we do not want this to fit on two different lines. So that's the first thing we need. We have to really address spacing. Even when you are replicating a score, you guys have to come out with something that you'd want to hand to a conductor or to musicians that they would easily read. And if they struggle to read because things are smushed together, think like a performer or conductor and think, would I want to read that? And if the answer is no, then we need to make some changes. Okay, so even though the reference score has everything shoved into two lines, we're going to be smarter than that. File. New. Document with setup wizard. It should look like that. Are we on the same page? Give me a thumbs up if that feels good. All right, excellent. Okay, so um, this is where you could create an entirely custom ensemble, but there's also just some more standard ensembles here as well. So we're gonna do the string quartet today. So select that, click on next. Okay, so in the setup wizard, you're looking at all of the instrument families. You're looking at um, some staff information, and then you see the instruments. This is where you could make changes, like say you wanted to do a string quartet plus bassoon, you could come over to Woodwinds and you could just double click on bassoon and it would add it, okay? Or remove it. We're just doing a standard string quartet. I just wanna just kind of show you this. This is also where you will establish score order, and score order is important. There is a standard score order for all of the things that we're doing. Right now, we have violin, violin, viola, cello. When we finish this, it'll say violin one, violin two, cello, piano, and that's what we want. If for some reason it was wrong, there's these arrows over here, and you can just move instruments once the instrument is selected, you can just use the arrow to move things into a different score order. Does that make sense? Perfect. Okay. Um, there's some other options here for score order. If you are creating an ensemble and you tend to use it a lot, you can save that ensemble and give it a name and then it will always be there. All right. So now we're going to click next. Don't save what I just did. Okay, and so now we're going to go and put in all of the information for our score. So let me pull up the assignment. So here we go. The title of this piece is the Erstes Quartet. And let's go ahead and put the opus number 41 and the number. The subtitle, we can just put this in English, that's fine for our purposes. For two violins, violins, viola, and cello. Composer is Robert Schumann. And under arranger, include yourself, transcribed by you. Okay, so your title, Erstes Quartet, Opus 41, number one. Subtitle it for two violins, viola, and cello by Robert Schumann and transcribed by you. Okay, we all there? So let's click next. All right, now give me some feedback. I want to know you guys are engaged with me here. What's our time signature for this piece? Two four. Two four. What's our key signature? Don't overthink it. What's the key signature? Is it C? It's C major, yes, very good. Good, great, so we don't have to change any of that. The assignment says we're only doing 12 measures. My friends, don't get fooled. You're looking at 16 measures on the reference score, but we're only going to do 12. Okay, the third rule of music technology is, does anyone remember, what's the third rule of music technology? Specify. Specify the initial tempo marking. Absolutely. And for us today, that is the Andante Espresso. This 
spell it right, Espresivo, good. Our unit of time, however, is what? It's an eighth note. It's an eighth note, thank you, Haley. It's an eighth note, so do make sure you change that. Our tempo is 69. If we had a pickup measure, we would check this box. We don't, so we're not gonna worry about it. So now we're ready for finish, unless anyone has a question. The larger your project is, the longer it takes to set that up. And as usual, it's a hot mess. So let's begin by just kind of moving things around with our selection tool. So we can move that, we can move this, we can move all of these things. Ellie, if you need to go in and add a space, just double click, double click into that. And then you can add whatever spaces you desire. Okay, Andante Espressivo. There's also an additional, as you look at your reference score, um, you'll see introduction. Be sure you add that in there. Don't worry about the um, dedication. I'm not worried about that, okay? All right, and then we can see violin one, violin two, viola, and cello. So for, especially for instrumentalists, and some of you may not be familiar with this, and that's fine. Instrumentalists, if they have to sit for many measures of rest, we include something called multi-measure rest. So if they, have two, if they have more than one measure of rest, we smush them all together into one measure with a bar, and then it tells them how many measures to count for. We're going to set that up now. This is very important, and for all these projects, except for the hymn, you need to make sure you set up multi-measure rest. If you click on Edit, come down to multi-measure rests. We're going to create for parts and score except you never create multi-measure rests in a score because a conductor or whatever needs to see every single measure. But the parts need multi-measure rests so that a musician's not seeing an empty measure, empty measure, empty measure, empty measure. That's not professional, that's amateur, okay? So we're gonna, we're gonna create those. So make sure score is not checked, just your parts, and then click Okay, you see nothing has happened, but it's fine. We've set up the document so that when we extract the parts, the multi-measure rests will appear in that. So, it, so you wouldn't do this in the hymn, obviously, because there's no parts, but everything else has to have multi-measure rests, okay? Let's review a few other things while we're in here. Let's just um, click on edit and our preferences. Let's make sure that it's saving. Let's make sure that our palettes and backgrounds are not being closed when we're done with them. So that should be not checked, closed subsidiary palettes not checked. That looks good. If you're missing some um, palettes, remember come up to window. And I suggest all of these palettes are selected for you to see. You can do that under window. Uh, PC users, you can right click to find the same information. Okay, but I suggest all those palettes are up. We are gonna um, learn some new tools, slurs, ties, dynamics using smart shape in the expression tool, which I explain here, articulation tool. We actually, I have repeat tool in here, but it, it's changed from when the, I had a different assignment here. Um, we're gonna do some rebeaming and some beam breaking, so I'll show you how to do that. Um, and then I want to, I need to make sure I show you guys how to extract parts. Right now, let's set up our save as. So file, save as, make sure it's going somewhere and you know what it is. So right now, take time, try and get the first four measures in and that won't let me show you guys a few more tools, okay? And it does start with a rest. So you're, you're gonna need your um, simple entry rests palette. First thing I wanna show you is dynamics. So at the entrance of all these, as you look at your reference score, at the entrance of all these, we have a piano. So we come up here to our expression tool, which looks like it's only for dynamics, but it's not. So here's what happens. We click on the MF, the expression tool. This box pops up, and just like it did with the lyrics tool, this is just letting you know at where it's going to attach those dynamics. It's gonna be on that line, okay? So you can change it 
I wouldn't worry about it so much here, but when you extract your parts, you might need to move dynamics around because something I'm looking for, I want to see dynamics on a straight line underneath the, the, the clef, okay? So that pops up. Come into your score. Make sure that arrow is pointing to the proper clef. We don't want it to attach to violin two. We want it to attach to violin one. When the arrow is pointing to the right clef, double click, and this pops up. It's important to remember, again, this is not just where you find dynamics. There's tempo marks, tempo alterations, expressive text, technique text, rehearsal marks. Okay, all of this under is under the expression tool. For right now, we're just doing a dynamic. Find the dynamic that you want, double click on it, ta-da, it's in the score. Let me show this again, okay? So first, come on and um, select expression tool. Come down into the score, make sure the arrow is pointing to the correct place, the correct staff, like the correct note you want it to apply to. Double click into the score, this pops up, Find the dynamic you're looking for, double click. Very fun tool. We're going to use the Smart Shape palette. Who's excited? Get excited, friends. It's super exciting. Hannah's all over this. Okay, everything in this palette is applied in the same manner. I'm going to show you the slur and diminuendo and decrescendo. Crescendo and decrescendo. Um, but please note, this is also where you'll find trill, the trill extension. Pianist, eight VA, pedaling, brackets, all kinds. There's glissandi. All of these are in here, okay? You just have to see they're all in there. All right, so with the Smart Shape palette, we click on the shape we want. We come into the score. We go to the note upon which we want it to start. We double click hold, hold the mouse, double click hold, and then we drag to the note we want it to stop on. You'll see that note light up. Do you see that? How that note's lighting up? Do we see that? Once it's where you want it to be, let go. Once I've done that, you see all these little, little diamonds. These are little editing diamonds. They allow you to change the angle, the size, the placement, okay? There's lots of different things that you can do. I want to do a slur. Come over here, put it right on the note you want to start, double click, oh shoot, <laughs> double click, hold and drag, double click, hold, drag, make sure the note lights up, and then let go. There's all these little editors, so you can do all kinds of things with this. Most importantly, we don't want our slurs touching other things, and I'm going to look for that in your editing of these scores and parts, okay? You can also move this entire thing. All right, go ahead and start joining me in this fun effort. Double click, hold, drag, double click, hold and drag. Now, right here, sorry, I told, come back with me. I just made, if you look at the reference score, we have an E that's actually tied not slurred to another E. Let me talk about this, okay? What I just created was a slur, which means that if we listen to the playback, you'll end up hearing a re-articulation on this E. It's actually a tie, which is to say that there should be no re-articulation on the E. There is a tie tool. It's over here in our simple entry tool. It's right here. Does everyone see where I am? Give me a thumbs up if you see where I am. Okay, I'm very lazy. To use the tie tool, you have to turn it on before you put the note in and then turn it off before you do the following note. I, don't, I find this very irritating. And the fact is, the only thing that makes a difference is on the MIDI playback. Once this prints out and I hand it to a musician, the fact that I use the slur tool or the tie tool becomes irrelevant. So I only ever use the slur tool. I never use the tie tool. It's just too many extra clicks. For those who do a lot of notation work or maybe you want to sub mus submit music to a competition and you need your MIDI playback to be accurate, you'd probably want to use the tie tool so your MIDI playback was accurate. For the rest of us, if, you're, if you don't care about the MIDI playback, 
just use the slur tool and not the tie tool. It's just way faster. Does that make sense? Everything that I just said, that was a lot. Okay. The slur tool is just really fast and easy. I'm a big fan of it. So as I said, in the reference score, we're looking at all this music on two lines. It's going to be too cramped once you guys get this put in. So I'm going to go ahead and force you right now to, to create, put this on three systems. So we're going to select one measure, make sure the whole measure is selected, down arrow, that'll move it down, and then select the last four and move that down. As you guys are doing slurs, if you need to slur again, and you need to go to the next line, watch, just drag it. It'll fix itself. Drag it to that note. See how it snapped to a new one? Don't panic. I know it looks weird. It'll fix itself, okay? And so the same thing is true for the diminuendo, the crescendo and the diminuendo. You select it. Watch for that arrow. Double click, hold and drag. Again, lots of editing boxes. You can see this, is everyone watching? You can change how big it is. You can stretch it back out. You can move the entire thing, okay? So lots of editing options, but it's the same process. Everything in the Smart Shape palette is applied in the same way, which is a double click, hold, and drag, okay? Okay. So it's like that, and it just doesn't want to put it in. Like I have a quarter note here, no, right, you, it. you have to delete those, you have to delete those rests. Oh, okay. So, yeah. let's see. Like that. Okay. Wonderful. It's in the assignment. Let me show it to you. Okay. And let me point out that this will become especially important in the last measure of this assignment, because you're going to have to do some re-beaming. I already know the finale is going to give it to you one way, but it's going to be different in the score. So, beaming is very simple. Everyone do this with me. Everyone pay attention and do it with me. Um, it doesn't matter where you're at. Just choose one of the measures that has 16th notes in it. Okay? So first, select the note duration. So 16th note. Go into your score, and no matter where you are, just pick a measure that has 16th notes in it. Select one of the 16th notes. And now hit your question mark key. And you can see what it's done to your beans. Yes? Give me a thumbs up if you're seeing this. It breaks the beam, and if you do it again, it reattaches the beam, okay? So you might need to do it to a note that's later or earlier, but this is your beam break tool to either add a beam, like re-beam a tool, or break a beam. I also am a Mac user too, and I also had to not push the shift down with the question mark. Yeah, that's true, yeah. It's not like you're actually doing a question mark, it's just the question mark key because when you say backslash, there can be some confusion. So I just say question mark key. Also, Sister Crawford, you probably did this at the beginning, but like the top uh, part of my thing is like really short. And so the whole title doesn't fit and it's really cramped. There we go. It's this very top one. So it's the top box in the treble clef. Okay, so go to the little box in the treble clef. Not that one, not that one, that one. No, no, no. That one? little one, yeah. Oh, there you go. Well, of course, <laughs> when I try to, okay. I think this is the advanced tools palette. I don't know, whichever this one is. It looks like this. This is where I'm at. And we want this little tool right here. It has an arrow pointing up and an arrow pointing down. And this is for stem direction. So you select that, then you come into your score and click on a note, and you see these boxes that pop up above and below. You just click on the box if you need it to go up or go down. Do you see that? Yes. Okay, and that will change your stem direction. Which also reminds me, my friends, if you put in a slur and it's in the wrong place, or sorry, if it's going the wrong direction, like it's above the note, but you need it below the note, click on it, right click, at the bottom of the dialog box, you see direction, and you can uh, change it to over or under. Let me show that again. Using your selection tool, select the slur, right click, 
come down to a direction and you can change it to over or under, whatever you need. Okay. All right, it's 11 o'clock. I want to show you guys how to extract this thing and I want to do it better than yesterday when I accidentally deleted my score, which was wonderful. Uh, let me, okay, so. First things first, make sure you have this saved. We already did this preemptively, so we should be good to go. So, don't actually do this, just watch, because you don't want it, you don't have to redraw these. So we're gonna come to File, Extract Parts. There we see our score and parts. You don't need to re-extract the score, you already have the score, it's there. We just need the parts, okay? And then click OK. And you'll see it generate the parts. And there's our multi-measure rest. Now, when you do this, your cello part will, it'll be in the cello part. So don't worry about it, okay? Oh, yes, this happened yesterday. Okay, nothing actually showed up. So I need to regenerate my parts. So let me go back to the score. I have a video tutorial on this. Um, we need to... Manage parts. parts. Aha, uh -huh, and there, okay, so now I have one measure, so it's still not right. Document. There it is. Okay, that happens a lot. I have a video tutorial, um, but basically you just go into document, manage parts, and you regenerate the part. I have no idea why this happens in Finale. It happens a lot. A few things I'm looking for. One, make sure all of your dynamics are on a straight line. So if you generate parts and it kind of looks like this, that's a no-go. Get everything on a straight line. If you have a slur that's sitting up here. You need to move it, all right? Everything needs to be edited nice and nice and clean, all right? No markings touching each other. That's not professional. So once you've done that and everything looks just beautiful, you've got your multi-measure rests. If you forgot to do your multi-measure rests, don't panic. You can still add them right there under edit, multi-measure rests create for parts and score, and create it for whatever part you're in if you if you somehow missed it, okay? No big deal. Once it's all edited and it's looking great and looking professional, then we're going to export this to a PDF. Mac users, you're gonna print to PDF. It will auto name this. Make sure it's saving somewhere where you're going to remember it is, and then save it. And then I recommend after you've done that, go ahead and close the part out. It'll ask if you want to save the MUSX file. Of course you do. And then do the same thing for the part.